In this video, we're going to have a look at how to determine the turning point of a parabola by completing the square. In the previous video, we already had a look at two other methods that you can use to determine the turning point of a parabola when the standard form of the equation is given. The first time that you came across completing the square was in the chapter Equations and Inequalities. In this chapter, you used it to solve x. And the first step for that was to ensure that the a value is 1 and our example's a value is minus 2. Therefore, we have to divide right through by minus 2 to end with x squared minus 4x equals 5. Our next step is to add a specific constant on both sides of the equation to ensure that the left-hand side can be factorized into a bracket squared. The specific constant that you have to add is x's coefficient, or the b value, that you divide by 2 or half, and then square. If you want to be reminded about why this is the value we add, you can follow the link in the description to the video in the chapter Equations and Inequalities. In the example, the b value is minus 4, which we then divide by 2 to get minus 2, and then square, which means we'll add 4 on both sides. When factorizing the left-hand side, we will have x and half of b in the bracket, and on the right, we have 9. To finally solve x, we can take the square root on both sides of the equation, and here you need to remember the plus minus on the right-hand side, which is why x minus 3 can then be equal to 3, or it can be equal to minus 3. This means that x is either 5 or x is minus 1. When we go to functions, we will use completing the square to rewrite an equation given in the standard form into the turning point form. This is because we can read the turning point from the turning point form. When using completing the square with a functions equation, you have to change your steps slightly because we want to keep the left-hand side of the equation as only y. The first step of completing the square is to ensure that x squared's coefficient is a 1, and in our case, we want to then get rid of the minus 2. Here, we cannot divide by minus 2 because the left-hand side needs to stay a y, but we can take minus 2 out as a common factor on the right. The next step is to take half of b squared and add it on both sides. And once again, we need to adjust this and do all the calculations only on the right-hand side. This means that the 4 that was added on the one side should now also be subtracted on that same side to ensure that the equation stays the same. The next step would have been to factorize the trinomial on the left-hand side. And we're still going to take the three terms that would have been on the left-hand side and factorize that into a bracket squared. That will be x minus 2 squared. Then we are left with minus 5 minus 4, which is minus 9. The final step is to multiply the minus 2 back into the bracket, and that will give us minus 2 multiplied by the x minus 2 squared, and plus 18. And now that we have the equation in the turning point form, we can say that the turning point for this function is at 2 and 18, because I'm reminding you that the turning point is the p-value with the opposite sign and the q-value. Let's go and sketch this parabola. If we start by thinking about the rough graph, we know that the minus 2 indicates that this graph has been reflected around the x-axis. The plus 10 indicates that this graph has moved up 10 units. And then we saw in the previous video that the signs of A and B differ 
and if they're different, it indicates that the graph moves to the right. We just determined that the turning point is at 218, and in the previous video, we learned that the y-intercept can be seen in the standard form by looking at the constant value at the end, so that will be 0 and 10. Now we need to determine the x-intercepts, and for this, we always change the y-value in the equation to 0. And because the left-hand side of the equation is now a 0 and not y anymore, we can divide straight through by minus 2 to simplify the equation. Next, we can factorize the right-hand side. And now we can say that the x-intercepts are at x is equal to 5 or x is equal to minus 1. Now we can go and draw the graph, indicate the four important coordinates as well as the axis of symmetry which is at x is equal to 2.